admire what you've done because you, yeah, you had those lost years in London, and uh, but you've been putting in the work. I mean, so many people get hooked on drugs and start blogging about it. But you, <laughs> you busted your hump and you really put your nose to the grindstone. And I mean, you've got, uh, you know, the Vice. How did the Vice? Your whole Vice story, because they love you over there. I mean, you did the series, now the TV show. Yeah, it started we, about five years ago. I started doing a satirical sex ed web series for them, which was, you know, they were like, you can make sort of eight minute videos for the internet. And we would ask like very deep questions, like, how do I get a boyfriend? And then we would like go interview like a tranny prostitute and be like, what a guy's like. And then I would interview my mom, like, what a guy's like. And that was <laughs> basically the show. Um, and it did well enough that, you know, years later, we we grew and we became, like, slightly more serious. I mean, maybe, like, 30% more serious. And now we're doing a show for Viceland, which is a half-hour TV show. Um, it explores sexual behavior in a way that I think is... I hope is like exploratory and light and that sort of counteracts a lot of like the negativity around like the sexual conversation these days. Um, it's very positive. Everything from like the first episode, I sort of travel the country trying to find a happy ending, which is actually like surprisingly hard for a woman. Like we're actually orgasmically marginalized. So I've been saying this for years. Uh, yeah. For, I'm part of the problem. <laughs> You're the oppressor. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's more happy ending massage parlors than bars in New York. That was the statistic that we found out Are during our research. Me? Yeah, crazy. But I mean, they won't give them. That's women. surprisingly silent on that one. He's uh, <laughs> don't go there. Yeah, he's got a map in his pocket. <laughs> Frequent chopper cards. But yeah, that and then uh, other other. We explore the relationship between a dominatrix and her lifestyle slave. Um, I, I get just my vagina high in San Francisco in a deep dive into the cannabis industry and like the vaginal cannabis what? pleasure products. It's very, this is, it's very journalistic show. This is, yeah, Peabody Award winning stuff, I'm imagining. Yeah, exactly. and, and so this is all on Wednesday nights. Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on Vice Live, if anyone has cable, which I don't think anyone under the age of like 36 does. <laughs> and then you wrote a book, and this is coming out February 6th, Slot Ever the Book. And are these collections from the website? Or are you put new, new essays together, or how did you? No, they, surprisingly, publishers did not want to publish a book a full of stuff that already existed online. Oh, okay. So I had to write a whole new set of words. This is being sold in Urban Outfitters. This is, <laughs> this is a legit book, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, any Urban Outfitter authors out there. Um, it's not a real book. <laughs> it, is a, is. it is a it is a is a memoir and slut manifesto. Um, Hell yeah. <laughs> hashtag feminism. Hashtag and, Unabomber. <laughs> and it's a personal. It's partially memoir, partial um, sort of talking about female sexual agency and why that's important today. And yeah, redefining the idea of the slut as something that's like positive rather than negative, but not entirely positive. I think there's something that's still sort of like unpredictable and dark and transgressive and seedy and fun and naughty about being slutty. Um, so we don't want to lose that, but like we want it to be like ultimately good. We want it to be aspirational, like you like strive to be a slut, you know what I mean? Like right. not everyone is covered, like <laughs> suited for this coveted position. You talk about the way it's portrayed usually in popular media, you know, the, the pretty woman effect, you know, the down and out, prostitute needs to be rescued or strung out or you know cracked out right like negative portrayals of sex workers in, in, in particular but also slutty people. yeah i'm actually very surprised that you know that 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 you're very <laughs> woke scott you'd be surprised what he knows <laughs> i can't be a pro-sex feminist also no you can't i know I, it's very true though like the way that we view promiscuous women and specifically sex workers like in tv and movies books you maybe not notice, but they always either die in the end or like end up sad and alone or like in a dumpster. It's always like, a, you know, a tragic disaster. You know, it's like not a coincidence that in every horror movie ever made that the slutty girl is the first one to get like eaten by the zombies. It's like a real trip. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we need to sort of subvert that. And you know, we need to see like a woman in media who, who has multiple sexual partners and like, yeah, doesn't get, you know, like stabbed in the end. <laughs>